All right, I'm good. Let's go. All right. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, playing, breaking, reviewing, smashing, marshalling <laughs> podcast. I lost the thread there somewhere. It's all right. It's all right, Steve. You you earned a break from getting it right. <laughs> oh man, our, our, uh, is this the future of Guitar Cab, Steve? We've got an article here. From Guitar Planet magazine on guitar the internet. Guitar Planet, yes, uh, yes. Is this the future guitar of Guitar Guitar Universe. Cam? Meet the Ultra Slim Flat Panel Model 20. Imminent Technologies 2.5 inch thick cabinet weighs half as much as a 1x12, but offers mm-hmm. the diaphragm area of a 4x12. That's a big old diaphragm in a little boy. Right out of the gate, it does not help that I do not know what the diaphragm area. We need measurements, people. Come on. Like, what does that, what does that mean? What's being measured when you measure? Right. When Is you it look just up, the cone? Is it the cone, like, diameter and, and surface area? Or is it also the center little? I, I, I'm revealing right now that I don't know the names of the parts of a speaker. <laughs> but is it is it the, the active... Area of a speaker, the surface area of it. Is that the cal- calculation they're going with here? So this, um, I'm trying to look at. They do look pretty fun. I do like the look quite a bit. Like this really thin flat panel boy. Like I want, I want to mount it to the wall behind me, you know? Like it's, it's classy. It is a classy look. What are you trying to look up, Steve? I want to know what the diaphragm area is. The diaphragm is the thin, <laughs> semi-rigid membrane attached to the voice coil, which moves in a magnetic gap, striking the diaphragm and producing sound. Oh, so diaphragm area. So it's saying... Where does it say that again? I don't know, man. I don't know what you're looking at. It Let's talk about have... this cab. So basically all it's saying there is that it has the same speaker size... At the same cone size as a four by twelve, but it weighs less than a one by twelve. Right. I mean, which one by twelve are we talking about here, though? Yeah. I, 20... I, I think the weight, like the weight, is a given. You look at it and you're like, oh, the, you know, this is going to weigh a lot yeah. less. But I think the physical dimensions of it. I think there are some hurdles to overcome here. Like, you know, it, it, classically. We put our amp heads on top of the cabs. This thing is mm-hmm. not going to operate in that sort of way. So do we need a different kind of head that goes with this? Or do we accept a, a different kind of stage layout or just a different way of working with these things? You know, I'm, tr- I'm trying to th- like imagine a setup that utilizes these. And I mean, this is dumb to have to think about, but looks correct. Looks stage ready, you know? Right. Like, like we don't, we don't even know, like it is claiming that it has the ability to keep up with a four by 12, just on surface area of the active speaker components. Uh huh. But I mean, there's a lot of questions there. You, 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 like, all right, guitar, we're so stuck. Guitarists are so stuck in the tradition of our technology that it is hard to imagine using something so outside the box or something yeah. so new and that's reinventing the wheel this much. Like, I feel like people would be m- more accepting of it right off the bat. And maybe this is just me, you know, putting my own thoughts on this. I'd be more accepting of it right off the bat if they told me, oh, here's a speaker cab. Uh, it's got 52 inch speakers in it. But don't worry, like the way they all combine together equals the same amount of volume and a similar tone to a 4x12. You, you just described Phil, Phil Jones Bass. Right, right. You remember right. that company? They, they do like this little 6-inch speakers and they do like an 18x6. Exactly. Uh, and that kind of like makes sense because, yeah, you're sharing the wealth. It's the same thing like 4x10 can get as deep as like a 2x12 sort of a scenario because you're sharing uh, the wealth. Um, this is different. I'm, I 
don't we have had you read about this before we started recording because uh, now you're doing all this googling trying to figure out the numbers and it's killing well, no, the show no, what, steve <laughs> what it really what it really was you're fine um i went and i looked at their website their website is uh geo cities 1990 uh, uh maybe maybe it's more like tripod less <laughs> geo cities more tripod um it looks like the website that Adam coded for Grand View in like 2003. Oh my gosh. No one's going to um, know what you're talking about, I but I know but, what you're talking about. But it's like it's the kind of thing that you would hire like a college to ma- a college student to like make your website. This company is actually really old. They're f- they were founded in 1982. Oh wow. They they do a bunch of different things. Um but this guitar speaker, they have one video of someone using it. And it definitely seems like it's, um, and it's a new product. Like the, in one of the product pictures, there's some, there's a Boss Katana in the product picture. So. They want $2,600 per cabinet. Yeah, because when you're using a Boss Katana, what you also need is a $2,600 cabinet to run it to. <laughs> um, they do say that they get not about a 99 decibel response at uh, one meter. So that's that's a pretty decent sensitivity. Um, it's eight ohm impedance, so that's pretty standard. Twenty one pounds, thirty two inches. It's a really cool looking thing, right? Uh, so my first concern is one: you got all the people out there who are like, "Well, when I use my Mesa head, I only use V thirties, uh, but when I'm using my Marshall head, I want green backs or you know whatever." Like, you got your you got your speaker heads. Right. They don't collect shoes. They collect speaker cabinets. Totally, totally. Um, and, it, and that's part That's part of the culture is that, you know, people get themselves a 2 by 12 cab and then they spend all this time like, well, I prefer this speaker. I tried this one and it just wasn't doing it for me, blah, blah, blah. And then enter this thing. And I could, I could definitely see people buying this and being curious about it. But then you lose that sort of element to the guitar culture of it or or maybe like people will fall in love with it and be like you know what i ditched all my greenbacks i i ditched my you know my my blue because like this is it for me this this has the sound that is in my head and then you get you know new converts to it or whatever but man that that kind of cultural barrier there where we're all used to speaking in terms of various you know, throwback speaker models is going to be really hard to overcome for something like this. Yeah. Um, They talk about, you got to like really dig down into the science, I guess, of it all. But what I can't seem to figure out is what the hell this thing is. (laughs) Like the actual physical component that makes the sound. Yeah. So like I found a picture of something that is just looks like a baffled pegboard with a bunch of switches in it is it on their site it's on their site okay send me Um, that link real quick through the facebook messenger they were uh they talk about using they call it like electric actuator so it's like a totally different thing it's not a cone um it's you know oh the the traditional 12 inch design versus what they do which is why they keep talking about diaphragm area because they, I I don't know what they have in it. It makes me think of uh, it makes me think of in ears actually. I'm the way they the, they talk, they talk about it. Do they have a picture of the component in here? I'm not seeing it. No, the they side. don't. That's a thing. Oh, okay. That's they what just have different. They have pictures of the speaker at different angle or of the cabinet at different angles. Yeah, it looks like the same picture as this in the guitar world. Yeah, uh, a lot of those here. are the same. Um. So there's a they have a they have a a bunch of graphs and whatever. It's really 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 well researched. It seems like oh sure, I'm sure they uh, spent the time like really figuring this out. But yeah, they're not showing us what the actual physical thing is in there. I imagine it's like just is, this flat panel of material with a bunch of different like little speaker drivers behind it. Right. And that's what, that's what I'm kind of wondering. And that's why I was saying like, is this kind of more like an IEM where you can get like, they're saying like, Oh, well, uh, a 12 inch speaker is like the IEM with a single dynamic driver. What's an IEM? 
in ear monitor. Oh yeah, okay. headphones, headphones, right, right, right. Like it's like it's got multiple drivers. Like it's it's yeah. so, it's so a flat you... panel of some sort of material to move the air, and then a cascade of drivers behind it to exactly. move to move the entire panel uh, in in series with itself. Have Have you ever seen those? Like, have you ever seen what one of those looks like? An ear, an ear, the, an in ear driver. In ear drivers. Yeah, they're really tiny. Yeah, but they're also n- not exactly speakers. No, from what I remember, right? They're uh, they're more like uh, the Nintendo sixty four Rumble Pack. <laughs> right, right. They're just a really fast version of it. Anyway, uh, they got a lot of technology. I I don't really want. Oh, they, here's the patent. Maybe that's what I needed to look at. Look at the patent, Steve. I'm going to read some of the copy here. Uh, okay, so there's a stuff about. Uh, yeah, yeah, offers the same speaker cone diaphragm area via the use of electromagnetic actuators. And then in addition, Eminent says it offers less distortion. This is the stuff where I'm like, I don't know if that's going to be attractive to guitarists because like speaker distortion is a lot of fun. <laughs> less compression. Speaker compression is a lot of fun. Like these are yeah. elements that guitarists use and push against and try to achieve like they're using all sorts of tricks with their amps to like hit distortion and compression just right not just in the circuit of the amp but in like in the speaker like like there's been periods there's been times when we're like i'm in a band jamming and it's like oh man that speaker is just cooking right now it sounds so good and i know it's not the 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 circuit of the amp it's the speaker itself is doing something magical at the volume and the frequencies that it's hitting and stuff like that. And much better dispersion of si- of signal compared with a traditional cabinet. I mean that, you know, that's great. Like the the beam, like being a slave to the beam of a traditional speaker is an issue and it is something that many of us try to find, you know, sorts of fixes around. Uh, but it says, i.e., your full tone will reach a wider range of listeners in different positions. It promises to handle tones an octave higher and lower than a regular cab, too. Like, I don't. That's. I mean, like, I think are they trying to say it would be a good bass amp or like a really good, like, dog whistle <laughs> simulator? <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> like, I can see the utility as a bass amp, maybe. Um, right. Yeah, so this is the, so the way this is set up. I'm reading, looking at now. It's a flat plate transducer. Oh, it mentions uh, opt for, for the full range as a keyboard. So I could see a keyboard as being all about this. Like, m- imagine you've got a keyboard and you've got your stand. The stand is kind of ugly, right? It's just yeah. like people can see uh, your legs sticking through the stand, and they can see that you're wearing cargo shorts and like. New balance and stuff un- you're, like that. So basically, everyone knows you're very unprofessional. Yeah, it, you're just not a rock star when you're standing there at your keyboard. But you take this flat panel and you put it in front of your keyboard. Now you now you're like a guitarist. Now you've got a big loud box right in front of your keyboards, but it's not thick. You know, it's a panel yeah. in front of you, and it's blocking up your pasty, you know, dad legs and your mm-hmm. grass stained New Balances and your embarrassing cargo shorts. And now you're a rock star on stage with your keyboard, and this thing can handle a frequency range that's a lot wider than what the guitarist is covering. So yeah, you can do those super high pitched dog whistle sounds. You can do super low, uh, you know, sub bass sounds, and do like DJ sounds with it and stuff. Yeah. I, I think there are applications here, but guitarists are so stuck in what we are that yeah. th- that yeah. kind of offering. I don't think it is gonna really connect to most guitarists like most guitarists don't want to sound they don't want a range that's a full octave lower because that's just bass territory and they don't want to not arrange it so full octave higher because they won't even be able to hear it because their tinnitus is so bad oh my gosh uh so i don't see this particular speaker they have one video it's a guy playing like a gretch he's playing he's doing like uh like that that Gret- the style that you're supposed to play on Gretsch, like that, like fifties, sure, sure, like rockabilly, you know, Chet Atkins. No, it's like Chet Atkins jazz. Gotcha, gotcha, like kind a, of a yeah. thing. So for that, the speaker sounds great. Um, it's apparently a, an actuator system that's attached to like panels. So I think the entire cabinet is basically the speaker, ah. the way it's designed, or it's like something along those lines. 
versus having, you know, individual, here's a speaker and here's a speaker and here's a speaker and here's a speaker. It kind of sounds like you could put the mic anywhere in front of that thing and, and maybe get oh, like sure. the, pretty much the same sound. Um, that all being said, I, I don't know what That's this looks another like. another thing, though. Like, there's there's all sorts of creative applications for how you mic a traditional speaker. Right. If you lose those different applications of like, oh, I want a center cone sound. I want an edge of cone sound. Like if if it just becomes homogenous across the entire diaphragm mm-hmm. of its active area, then you lose some of that recording ability. Right, right. I don't know that it replaces it in all situations, but I think it's a cool idea for like going playing out. The other side of that is, I uh, do you remember when we played that uh, we thought it was? We were told like, oh, it's like we're you're gonna be. Well, you're not going to be part of Bonita Fest. You're going to be right, like right. next to Bonita. You remember that stage? Yeah, we played it in front of a church that happened to be, be next to a street fair, and we thought yeah. we were playing the street so, fair. So, so that stage, this spe- like every piece of equipment that was on that stage fell over at some point. Like we were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't because we were like kicking things off the stage. It, they just vibrated off the stage. They essentially gave us a trampoline to play on. Yeah. It, it was just not, it was a kind of just not, it was a stage for like a grad, you know, graduation podium. Right, or something. right, right. Not to put uh, 600 pounds of sweaty ma- men jumping up and down on top of it. Um, they go, <laughs> man, this, we, this was what, like 15 years ago, maybe 20 years yeah. ago, this show that we're talking about. We thought you guys were a church band. <laughs> well, who, who told you that? It's not uh, our fault. Yeah. So my concern with this piece of technology is it just has that one kickstand. I'm sure it works really good, like for the situations, you know, if you're in a yeah. cover band and you're just kind of doing the, uh, you're kind of doing the country fair cover band thing or whatever, like it probably works great. But then I'm coming at it from the other angle of like, if I'm just, you know, okay, Steve, like here we are, they say in another like 10, 15 years, and I'm just doing like a gypsy jazz at the, at the, uh, weekly farmer's market. I got right. my gypsy jazz booth. I'm just collecting tips, whatever. Am I going to spend $2,600 on a speaker? Like I just right. can't, I'm going to get a boss Katana air and I'm going to call well, it a day. I mean- I mean, speaking of like jazz people, like if this thing does offer a wider range of frequency, that might be something that is attractive to someone who's like, oh, yeah, I play, you know, this big jazz box and I want people to be able to hear, yeah, you know, every, yeah. the, the entire range of my instrument sort of thing because I'm just kind of playing solo and I want something kind of light and classy to carry around like this. This honestly could there, there could be very real applications for this like yeah, yeah I'm, I know, I'm for thinking sure. I'm thinking like rock guitarists and surf guitarists and stuff like that and punk guitarists where like you know definitely a punk show this thing's not going to stay upright no if you if <laughs> it you needs, took, it needs a beefier situation to hold it up if you took this thing paired it with like I somewhere around here uh I think in the garage I have a uh I have a crate power block Right. Create power block with this thing. You've got a full 100 watt rig for like 28 pounds. And part of that rig is the speaker that is like a basically claiming to be equivalent to like a four by 12. So you're going to show up to, you know, your farmer's market gig with the crate power block, uh, uh, maybe a little like three pedal pedal board. Um, and your guitar and this thing, and you're going to be playing everything you want to play for under 40 pounds. Like that's a pretty cool setup. Like I wouldn't mind seeing that. like a quilter collab with this concept. Oh yeah. No, that like would a, be perfect. Imagine like just like a three inch bar at the top of this. That is just the quilter amp. Like you've got a row yeah. of knobs up there. Now it's your amp. Give it a beefier stand and yeah. now now you're talking now you've got something that is stage ready all by itself because you still have to haul around a cab with this yeah you yeah. know <clears throat> and the idea that it's going to have a wider spread to it it's not going to be as beamy as mm-hmm. a uh, traditional speaker like that does sound attractive as a stage speaker so i don't know i i think there is something here but i think 
that it's going to become, it would be very specific yeah. to very specific uses. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was going to transition out of this. $2,600 think- though. Do you, th- do you think that's, that's a tough price to get behind? I'm sure it's because it's like, you know, it's, it's unique technology, but I'm sure if they were able to make enough of these things, the price could come down with, you know, mass production and stuff like that. Like if, what is the price, Steve, where you would start to be curious, like, oh, maybe I'll get one of those. Check it out. So that's the problem because I think the price where I start getting like interested in this is like. Well, I know for me it's may- sub one $1,000. It's like, yeah, it's like $800. Yeah. I think if this was $800 and I could go to a store and try it real quick and just make sure that it doesn't sound wonky then it would be like, I'm curious about this. Then I'm looking at space in my house, like, oh, it would fit right there really nicely. Or I'm looking at, you know, like gigging opportunities with it. And like, hmm, that would be pretty convenient. Like imagine, imagine you want a like a loud stage rig. You stack a bunch of these in the back of your tour van. You could mm-hmm. stack like, so you could probably do the math real quick because it's it's what two and a half inches thick. You could probably stack like forty of these things and and take up the same space as a traditional four by twelve. Right, and you could have some sort of rigging at a show where you build a wall of these behind you. Like yeah. it would that would and it wouldn't take up a ton of space. Like you'd have to have some sort of like stands to hold it all sort of thing. So there's extra mm-hmm. rigging there, but like even packing like ten of these. That would be something pretty wild, and it would take up less space than a four by twelve. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So I, I there <clears throat> there is something there. I think. I'm trying to find out how much their regular products are, but um, yeah, their website is is very, uh, it's not great. Yeah, sales. It's like uh, well, Del- then direct it's buy. It's just going to send you out a bunch of dealers. So they're... Eight, you can't... Direct buy doesn't mean direct from them. It means find a dealer. Yeah. So they have like an 8-inch LFT-8B speaker. The, oh, my gosh. The, That's a $2,500, 65-pound. Like these, this company is... I think this company is very much living in the in like the hi-fi world. And now right. they have a guitar product that's priced like a hi-fi product. Oh yeah, I just clicked one of the retailers they're at that is in California, and it is a hi-fi. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a home, like and studio sound retailer. There's no other um, guitar stuff here. They sell uh, tone arms, like for for like. I mean, my arms are you know it's been a while since I went to the gym, but they were pretty toned a couple weeks ago, I guess. Oh my gosh, no, like the. Uh... Or they, I guess they support it. Maybe they don't sell it anymore, but that's the, uh, the, like for a record player, mm. like that yeah, high yeah. end, like, so they're deal. into all sorts of, you know, snake oily yeah. sorts of things. So, you know what? Best of luck to them. I, I think it's a really good looking product. I'd love I think to try it, one. I, I think at $2,600, you're just going to have problems getting into the guitar space. Well, I don't um, think at $2,600, they're looking to do a massive amount of business with them, but they are probably going to yeah. catch. I mean, off that article, I bet, I bet they sold a dozen of these things to people that are just curious, but it's not going to be like, Oh, Hey, there's this thing that everyone's going to adopt now where everyone's going to be curious about like they, you know, they're, they're a small company. It looks like they've been around for a while. They're trying to catch, you know, some new sales with an article sort of situation. Yeah. All right. Do we want to talk about the other thing? <laughs> Uh, sure. Let's talk about the other thing. We've been sitting on this for a while. Um, this was sent, I think this was in a discord. Maybe it was where no, was it was on the JHS Facebook. No, no, I'm saying that's how I found out about it was from oh, a discord. Okay. Um, I, I blurred out the name of the guy who did this, even though he says, okay, so I did this to myself. I thought I would try to see if y'all would help me out. Lol. I bought another guitar and the wife isn't going to be happy, which is uh, f- funny for reasons. Uh, was hoping one of the many guitar groups I'm in might want to help a bro out and make a fake raffle post. I can show her saying I won the guitar. I'm a moron. I'm the moron here. 
but I just can't help it sometimes. You know, so so this isn't fully like wife bad. This is just like it's like I'm an, an idiot. idiot. I did a thing. I'm trying to figure out how to like. It's not wife bad because he's not saying his wife is bad. He's saying that he's bad, but it's still like this kind of cringy. Like, how do I hide my you know irresponsibility from my spouse from my partner yeah. like it's you know like imagine it going the other way like it's not it's not a good well so look so you know, like imagine if your wife or one of our wives right now was in some group like how do i like trick my husband into thinking that this thing i bought came from a raffle like this yeah it's it's shitty whoever's doing it well it's know? also just like how does that work because i mean i guess it everyone Everyone does everything differently. Of course. Um, and everyone has different I, relationships I've, where different sorts of things fly and different things right. don't. Like I've got a joint, like all my accounts are technically joint. Like maybe they're not, they're not set up explicitly as being joint accounts, but you know, it's, uh, but like, I don't, the passwords are the passwords and like my wife and I, we both use the same PayPal account. For example, right. like, like technically, technically that's my account, but we both use it. Either of us can go in there at any time and, and look at like, oh, uh, you that guitar that you said you won. Uh, why is there a two thousand dollar charge for that or whatever? Right, right, right. So, so that's that was one shipping, thing. honey. <laughs> yeah, everyone does it a little differently. Uh, this one is uh, uh, particularly bad because just so everyone understands this. The globe where it says eight, I uh, blacked it out eight minutes and then there's a globe. The globe means anyone can see it. And sometimes it also <laughs> means that Facebook is going to suggest <sighs> yeah. uh, these groups to your friends. Like yeah. I'm, I've had people back when Gear Talk Praise and Worship was a public group, glo a globe group. I've had people who are like, Man, you talk sure like talking about guitars a lot. Like, your, uh, yeah, your, totally. Like, because the gear talk stuff was like showing up on public. random people's pages because it was public. So, uh, so this happened, and I went in the, on the thing and commented and said, "I, you know, yeah, dude, you are the moron." Th or no, someone's like, "Oh, his he hope uh, this guy better hope his wife never sees this." And my comment on it was, "This is a public group. His wife has probably already seen it." Yeah. And then one of our listeners, uh, Colby Ballswell, tagged his wife on oh, the no! thread. Oh, Colby, you did him dirty. Uh, well, because that was the joke. Like, is everyone this a in screen there, grab here? This is a screen grab. Oh, no. We have a screen uh, grab of someone's text with yeah, their so, wife? Uh, and so that's my responses are in blue. But Colby just sent this to me. Oh, this and, is you talking to Colby. Okay. Yeah. But the in the in the it's hard to see unless you zoom in. But she is like thanking him for tagging, oh my gosh, uh, tagging her in it uh, because it's like thank you, basically thank you for calling out my idiot husband. This is why you don't make uh, dumb jokes on the internet about your spouse I don't about. I don't like, think this honestly, was a like, joke. I I kind of look at, here. There's two scenarios here. Like he's the first scenario is he's actually trying to do the thing that he's saying and he's like help me help me fake this and in which case he's an idiot yeah. uh the other scenario is like this is a weird like humble brag ask me about my new guitar sort of post and ha 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 oh how am i gonna explain it to my wife man she, but she probably already knows and he's just making a dumb thing but yeah that response from the text uh, I mean, I I feel a little icky that we're looking at text messages in between, <laughs> having to do with like a spousal relationship here. Well, no, this is just this I is know, uh, I know. this was a screenshot that or this was a conversation that I had with, right, right. with Colby. But it's a um, screenshot of a screenshot right. of no. her saying thank you to. <laughs> So 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 here's the kicker with the whole thing that this is the part that cracked me up the most. She is also a guitarist. <laughs> Oh my gosh. How do you hide a guitar? Per you can't hide a guitar purchase from another guitarist. No, this has to be some sort of joke that I, they're, they have, this has to be like, they're like marriage kink. I <laughs> like, hope so. Now you, now you pretend to spend money irresponsibly. <laughs> irresponsibly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
<laughs> everyone's gonna shame you on the internet next yeah it's oh, it's man. off the rails um anyway so yeah do better don't do this don't Just, do it like even if it's a joke like don't clutter up everyone else's lives with you're like, we don't want to know what's happening in your marriages, guys. <laughs> like, like this is a TMI level sort of thing where like we didn't, we didn't need to know that you, your wife doesn't need to know. Just post cool pictures of the guitar that you bought. Just post yeah. cool pictures of the guitar that you bought. That's all you have to do. If you're having like domestic issues behind the scenes, like that's keep that to yourself. Also, this isn't even a JHS pedal. Right. It's a guitar. Come on. If this wrong was a group, right? Wrong group. Wrong, wrong. hashtag. Wrong group. Wrong group. <laughs> wrong. Wrong group. Hey, wrong All right. group. Hey. All right. Uh, this is a part of the show where we do housekeeping. It it's housekeeping sure time. Play is, the housekeeping Steve. song. Oh, is it on here? It is. Housekeeping time. Uh, housekeeping is a part of the show where we take a moment to thank our patrons. Thank you, patrons. Uh, if you want to help support the show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast where for as little as a dollar a month, you can, uh, help with the production of this program. Yep. That's it. We don't have any new ones, do we? We don't. It's been a while. It's been a it's slow, been a while. I think all of the non- normal content that we've been doing yeah. thanks to covid well, and gear fest and nam and all this stuff maybe we just kinda... need to accept that everyone who was going to join has joined that's that that could be the case also this is the end I, it's the end also, of it like you know I we guess have the, everyone that we were going to get i guess the economy is pretty pretty dicey right now so people are probably yeah, uh no, I, which i i get that too i don't blame anyone like I, we've said it before if you joined, you can leave, and we're not going to have any feelings against you. If you need to, if you need to pause your contribution to the show, we get it. Like it's not, it's not a commitment. We're going to survive. We will adjust. If everyone left overnight, we would survive and adjust. Yep. You have personal finances. We get it. Do what you need to do. Be responsible. And don't tell us about those personal finances because Just don't they're tell personal us, finances. Don't tell us you're hiding your patronageship. From your spouse. We oh don't want to hear about that either. How, guys, I just I just gave money to 60 Cycle Hum. How do I tell her that it was for a raffle? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's yeah, it. But huge thanks to everyone who has supported us in the past. I mean, you guys bought a lot of drinks for us at Sweetwater. You also covered a bunch of Ubers and things like that. Uh, we did buy Rhett Scholl a drink with Kyle B's money. So thanks Kyle B for uh, supporting the podcast through Patreon so that we could buy Rhett Scholl a drink just for you. He said, thank you. Actually, I have a little video of him. Maybe I'll play it right now. Here it you're is. Gonna play it, you're going to play it right now. Here's me taking a plastic cup full of Maker's Mark whiskey to Rhett Scholl. There you go, Kyle B. That's what your Patreon money bought. <laughs> oh, you're gonna you're you're gonna put it in. Yeah, I'm gonna edit this, Steve. There's editing I have to do. Oh, okay. Steve is like waiting for it to happen on our I'm live like, uh, uh, streamyard thing here. <laughs> I don't see a video, man. I don't I don't think you did it. All right, what's next? Should we do a sponsor? No, let's do this boat base and then we'll do a sponsor. A boat base. Boat base. This is this a boat base. This was sent to us by a couple people, I think. We have it down as Ben Borman sent it to us. I think I've only got the one picture of it. Yeah. So this is the Did one they modify this? They modified the string spacing to do they this too. Modif we don't have a shot of it, but if you look closely at a, that's not going to let me move it only here. Dang it. Preview. Yeah. If you look at the bridge, that's a, there's like they a wood, in, a piece of wood or something in they there. They put in a wooden arched thing here and the string spacing you're seeing isn't string spacing. It's the fact that it's arching right. like a cello. Right. They're, they're trying to recreate a cello. They thing. literally did the, uh, the, which makes me wonder how it frets. They literally did the, um, school of rock thing, but in reverse where they Rhyme. took, a, they took a bass, they put that sling in there and then they're like, cello. <laughs> 
The the cutaways are interesting. I get it. I get what they're trying to do, and they've committed uh, to to the situation with that bridge piece in there. But let's be honest. Uh huh. The fact that they're selling it probably means it doesn't work. Great, right? <laughs> <laughs> if this worked out the way they probably planned, they wouldn't be selling it. We don't have a price on this, huh? No, we don't. This is this is all the information that we have. Oh, okay, uh, because part of me is like, this was. I think these are like four hundred bucks. Yeah, they ain't bad. Right? Yeah, it's it's honestly uh, like the it's one of those squires that is like an unbelievable <laughs> unique deal. Yeah. You're like you're not going to get this from another company. Like okay, the closest they're... you get to a base six at this price range is from Harley Benton, and it don't have that wiggle stick, baby. You want that wiggle stick? Yeah, look. Some of these are on reverb for more, but it looks like you can get one of these brand new from Sweetwater for $460. <laughs> Don't forget to click the links. They're affiliate links. Yeah. Um, They're $400 then, new? $460. $460. That's yeah. still like for such a niche thing. Yeah. It, like it's a really base cool. six for $460. That's, that's awesome. Um, And so my thought here is like, I wonder if this is one of these things where this guy's going to be trying to sell this for $500 because he did the work and because cello bowls, bows can be very expensive. Yeah. No, like the the the, the work here actually does look clean. Yeah. Like I don't agree with all the lines that they went with here. Like things oh, they're get a terrible. Little, things get a little bit I actually like the top cutaway. That looks like the ideal functional way to do this without getting ugly. Right. It's like he, he, the, remember, he's not going to be playing this standing up. Oh, it does have a strap, so maybe. I kind of feel like this is. No, I think the thing he, he did wrong is the strap should be going to the headstock to push the center of this backward, so that he could bow it to the side of his body. Because unless he's holding it upright somehow, I really don't understand how he's playing it. I think he's holding it like holding it as an upright or holding it upright like. So maybe it's, stra it's strapped over one shoulder. This is meant to be Jimmy Paged. Right. Like this is meant to be played the way you would play. No, because a Jimmy six. Page was still playing a guitar with a flat bridge. The, the way the bridge is bowed means that you have to rock the bow back and forth in a pretty dramatic sort of range. Right. I understand that, but I'm saying like you're still. Like to play those low strings, you have to have the bow passing through your body. They're just going to gonna like T Rex arm that thing. You think so? Yeah. Not to or get, they're going to come in at like an a, angle. If he wants to get, if they want to get a, a big pass of that bow across that low string, which I think they want to do, that's what, that's all I want to do when I look at this, then they need to have it situated on their body in a way where they can wrap that bow behind their body. I don't think you need to move the strap to do that. All right. All right. It think, would be nice if we could see someone. The angle of the body. This ad really needs a photo of someone using it. It needs you know? a video. It needs a video of somebody actually doing the thing. Right. But yeah, the, the, the bottom the, curves, like the, the work is clean as far as the wood being smooth and that transition from the paint to the wood and stuff like that. I actually think it's fairly, a fairly attractive look, the white over the, the wood. Yeah, the that, that's interesting, I guess. But I, I kind of the wish there was I... another sharp little hook on both sides of the bottom thing there to, to match the top. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, well, it's just because of the, uh, the, uh, the control, control plate. plate. Yeah, I know. I think there would be a way to do it. They were trying to remove as much wood as possible, but I think they should have left some of that wood in there and just done a really much smaller polite little carve i don't i you know the more i stare at this thing the more it's starting to fall into your scientists asked uh you know what they right. what they could do or whatever like i wish uh, it came out a little a little hook like this you know and like connected right with there a, with a little more wood there. i don't know if yeah. you can see my cursor can you see my cursor i can see your cursor okay thank you for looking at my cursor <laughs> ryan why is your cursor doing that <laughs> <laughs> I like to call it my cusser. It's oh like cursing, gosh. but it's cussing. Because when I'm on my computer using my cursor, I end up cussing every time. Because it's just where do where is where did it go? 
I don't have anything else to say about this, and now I'm making dumb jokes about cursors. So just the more I, the, move on. The, I feel like the more I stare at it, the worse it gets. So we should move on. Uh, I this, mean, in theory, in theory, a base six that you can bow like a cello does sound pretty cool. But in practice, I don't know how this is going to work out. In theory, just f- play one string. I, I don't like know. that you can see that there's an extra set of strings in the bag just poking out like, ah, ah. Yeah, yeah. Looks like get, I've got does, extra strings. Does it come with that too? I think so. I think he's like, this is the whole package. You get the guitar, you get the bow, you get the strings, you get the bag. You know, he's enticing you. Are we doing, are we going to do a sponsor now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Big Ear Pedals. That's right, Steve. Uh, what do you got? What bigger pedals do you have in front First of you? First of all, I have this overlay here, and Ooh, I am nice holding overlay. the Shake. The Shake. Steve. Yeah. The Shake's You're not exactly home. a pedal. Do you have your own bigger pedals in reach right now? No, all my pedals are actually... Get, uh, get yourself a bigger pedal in your hand, Steve. I know they're in your closet right now. I'll talk about the Shake. So the Shake, it may look like a guitar pedal. I promise you, it is not. This is a shaker, and not just a shaker, an electronic shaker, and the shaking component inside is made out of the clipped little legs of resistors and diodes and other components that go into pedals and whatnot. You plug in right here, there's a piezo microphone inside, I think a piezo? A piezo? Piezo. No, it's just a transducer pickup. It's a transducer. I was totally wrong. Uh, There's a transducer pickup in there, picking up the sounds of the shaker. And you're not just picking up the sounds of the shaker. You can also pick up the sounds of that click there electrically. You can also like use a pick and scrape the edges of the knobs that have a little thing on there. The, The actual print on it is raised. So you could even do this stuff and get all sorts of sounds out of it. You can beat it like a drum. You can even sing into this little hole. You can do all these things, and I don't think they even sell these anymore, but my pitch is, maybe they do sell them. Go follow them on all social media. Go check out their website. See if this still exists as a product you can buy, and make sure you follow them so you can stay up on all the other cool things they do, because stuff like this is going to come out again, I'm sure. Big Mm -hmm. Ear likes to do fun things, and you want to be up on it before they all sell out. So huge thanks to Big Ear Pedals for once again sponsoring this thing. Steve, what bigger pedal do you have? I got the back Black Betty. Ooh, Black Betty. Bambalam. Bambalam. It's a fuzz. It's a one knob fuzz. It's a fuzz. Black Betty it's had a fuzz. Bambalam. <laughs> had one knob. Bambalam. Whoa, Ooh. Black Betty. Bambalam. All right, man. What's new? <laughs> what is new? I got that Guild Surfliner in a while oh, yeah. ago. And uh, it's been living by my desk, and I've been playing it a lot and honestly really enjoying it. There's something very different about the way it sounds plugged in. I mean, obviously plugged in as an electric guitar. Like, it's got this really clear, bright, glassy sort of thing going on, even on mm-hmm. that bridge humbucker. I mean, it's got that kind of, like, mid-thud to it, but it's still, like, really glassy sounding. And I've been enjoying exploring a guitar that sounds somewhat unique in a way. But the big problem, Steve... Yeah. Can you see the big problem? There's no there's no wiggle stick. There's no there's no wiggle stick, Steve. It's called the Surfliner and it doesn't have a wiggle stick. So I've been trying to think of ways to remedy this major problem yeah. that the Guild Surfliner has. There's a couple options that I've been thinking about. First option and probably the most practical and the one I'm probably going to go with is one of those t- uh Tysco style trims like kind of angular thing with the, you know, the, the angular bar that comes off of it. And it's, it's a surface mount kind of floppy pancake sort of deal down there. Um, that would be the easiest and it would cover up these ferals here. Mm-hmm. How do you pronounce ferals? I always call them ferals. Ferals. There it is. But you could be right. I don't know. Yeah. So it would cover up that whole situation. A big speed would be doable. I could mount a big speed here. You would see the ferals here. Mm-hmm. You will see the ferals, is what I'm getting at. Uh, that's a Will Ferrell pun. Uh, so, anyways, the other option is remove wood. I like how Steve didn't react at all. He's like, this will be over soon. <laughs> the other option is to take wood out and plop 
like a, a Jazzmaster style trim on here. Right. So but you're gonna have, but then you're gonna have the string holes in the back. I'm gonna have the string holes in the back no matter what. That's true. So, you but know, at least, but at least with the big, like if you do the Bigsby option, imagine my embarrassment. Reversible. Imagine my embarrassment if someone saw the back of the guitar and they knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, modified. Hey, that could be string through and he put a wiggle stick on it. I'd be so embarrassed. Yeah. The, uh, I'm reading, I was trying to read about the pickups because I was wondering if they were going for something specific. They're called it, a Aerosonic. The single coils are called Aerosonic pickups. Right. Uh, which kind of almost makes me wonder if they were going for like a Burns Trisonic, you know, kind I, of a sound with that. Because they got I the look. Think that like, could be the thing. Yeah. Because visually they remind me of Trisonics. But they uh, also kind of look like variations on Telecaster pickups. Yeah. That yeah. I've seen, you know. Uh, uh, then the and they do the have bridge, that twang. The bridge pickup is like a guild. It's supposed to be a, like a recreation of a of like a guild style. Oh right, 60s pickup, right. So, and I don't cool. know how close it is to original guild stuff, but it does sound nice, and I do like it. I'm I'm really excited to try to use it live. Oh, I need to confirm on Planning Center that I'll play at church this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, they haven't replaced me already because I haven't answered for like two weeks. Uh oh, <laughs> that's a long time. What do you have new, Steve? I got this in the mail the other day. Pull this out. I ordered this from Humbucker Music. Oh, that's a that's a uh, that's a teaser. The folks at home know when you order something from Humbucker Music, there's only one thing it could be. I actually, don't know. I already I, I actually not familiar. I'm about to be surprised. By I something. actually posted this on on the grams already. But oh, okay. I have the uh, the Palsy. Tim. Uh, Tim version three. I had, I think the version one before and I sold it because it was a huge flip. Um, at the you time, it, it, would have been, it would have been a bigger flip. If what, I would do you have think it would be it. a double flip or a triple flip? Uh, it was like at least a double flip. Um, but I'm really excited to have this. The, the case on this one they, they is a little smaller than the old ones, which was a thing that I, that was actually part of the reason I didn't keep. I remember the how one. it's thick so that thing was. thick. Um, I it could have been an amplifier. It was so big. Yeah, I kind of want to, um, and I will figure out how we how we plan this. Uh, but I I want to try to at least do some basic, um, Tim versus Timmy kind of okay. stuff. I've heard they're similar, but not exactly the same circuit. No one really seems to be able to uh say one or the other. You know, some people say the Timmy has more dirt on tap. I don't really know. Mm. Uh, but I, I kind of want to mess around with that and just put him head to head again. And, well, you and know, see Timmy's, like. Timmy's a little bit more immature. He's younger. He's playing in the yard. He's getting dirty. Yeah. Tim, Tim is inside. Mm -hmm. Tim, when Tim goes outside, he steps very gently in the grass. He makes sure not to get debris on his shoes. That's Tim. So Tim yeah. is definitely going to be less dirty than Timmy. And that's yeah. just a given. So I, I don't remember how this is run. Uh, but you can see and on the back. Don't even get me started on Timothy. Oh my gosh! You can see on the back. There's a uh, input, output, and then there's actually an effects loop in the middle of it. And I think the effects loop is between the boost and the and the bypass. But I have to we double to, check on that. We need to get Paul on the phone, and we mm -hmm. need to we need to pitch a Timothy pedal right now. Timothy, right? Timothy, but is it going to be spelled like? Timothy or like traditional Timothy or like Timothy, like Timothy Chalamet. I don't know the difference. Uh, one is the T-H-Y spelling and the other one is T-H-E-E. -E. It's more like Timothy oh. versus Timothy. I think we're going to go with the classic option here, Steve. Oh, okay. All right. Is there a classic option in that decision? I think Timothy is the classic. Uh, the classic. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Blah. oh, great podcast moments. Thanks. Put that one in the podcast museum. <laughs> oh, man. Should we do another ad? We should do another ad. All right. Let me cue it up here. Find this. Right now is a good time for thing. another ad. Oh, finally, it's time for another ad. This thing is, is ridiculous. This is a left hand alien star guitar. The neck is shaved flat on back. Also, the neck and fingerboard is getting wider towards the body. Which No, you have to read that right, Steve. 
Also, the neck fingerboard is getting wider towards the body. Also, isn't that normal? <laughs> no, Steve, you haven't seen what this is doing. Yet. No, I, I, I pulled these screenshots. Also, it needs parts. It needs a and, lot of parts. And it's $99 European. Yeah. So let's check this thing out. Here we go. Look at that fretboard getting wider. It gets real wider there at the bottom. It's very flat. Is there I, any I don't even think reason that's a to have that? So that you can, is it so that you can do an extra long bend that you risk your E string getting hung up on the edges of the extra frets? Like, like who is doing that bend to warrant a, um, a fretboard that wide? I think it's so you can add like a, a single sympathetic string. <laughs> I don't know where it ties on to the headstock it's exactly. It's so you can f fret someone else's guitar with your guitar. You walk up to someone here. Here, man, I'm going to use this fret on your guitar, and you can press it against their guitar and fret their guitar for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it has to just be like, uh, I really didn't know what I was doing. I, I just might as well go for this. There's a lot of, like, I don't know what I was doing elements to this. But weirdly, a lot of I didn't know what I was doing elements to... <laughs> Well, what's wild to me is the... Like, look how clean that control cavity is. The control cavity is way too clean. This guitar does not deserve... everything else that's going on here. This control cavity. Are you kidding me with that control cavity? That's a work of art. I, yeah, I don't understand the neck. The hum, the humbucker, single humbucker pickup is actually embedded into, like, the neck itself. Well, it's, is that really the neck at the point? It's, it, it should have been a neck through situation, but then, like... There's got to be some sort of concept they were going for here, like proof of concept, like, oh, swappable body guitar. That's got to be what this no, is. No, no. The proof of concept here is, hey, guys, look what I can do with all of the spare parts in my garage. Now, here's something interesting. Because the neck technically is bonded to a good portion of the body, uh -huh. the, there's only one screw holding the neck into the body because that's all it needs. There's no... that There's... A single screw neck plate, probably a neck washer situation going on there. Right. Because it doesn't need to hold the neck against a chunk of wood because it's already doing that. Like it is neck it is a it is a very small neck through guitar that happens to have another electric guitar shape around it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Unfortunately I do. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, it's a bit of a novel concept. And I'm assuming that the bridge is connected to the body as well. It's very interesting to me that the bridge is sunken down. But I guess that makes sense because the neck doesn't have a lip coming down to the body. Yeah. Which is why the pickup is flush with the body. I actually wonder if that pickup would need to be lowered deeper into the body to be the correct spacing away from the strings. There's, there's a lot of big questions here. There's so much weirdness. This neck looks uh, uh, completely flat. And then they talk about how like the back of the neck is has is flat. And it's like, really? That's the part you want to talk about being flat? Well, it is very, very flat. And there's some, there's a couple areas of this project that are like, oh, there's some clean woodworking. And there's a lot that are not. I feel right. like. It might just be the room he's in, the lighting he's using. I feel like I can see a wave on the back of that neck. I don't know if you can see it from your side. You probably don't have as many pixels as I do. But it looks like if you ran your hand down the back of this neck, you would feel a bumpy road. Oh, yeah. No, of... no. I, I saw that in the... I definitely see that. Yeah. So, like, on one side, look at that control cavity. That's a work of art. And then, like, what is going on there? What is going on here? Look at that headstock. Like, this is this is a gritty boy here. All right, they're asking 99 euros for this. I think that's about a do uh, 120 bucks. Uh, approximately 133 Canadian. Maybe the euro and the dollar are, are really close. I think right they're now. close right now. Um, but it gives you an idea. So let's call it 99 bucks. Would you pay 99 bucks for this? No, no. 50 bucks? 
where's the value in this? Where's the piece that I can use on anything else? I'm not going to complete this. No one is going to complete this because the person building it realized it couldn't be finished and they gave up. Uh, Super Rich Steve sees this. Uh, the only value 90, is in the pickup when the pickup probably is nothing exciting. $99, $99 is not enough for this guitar. That's when, my favorite what? James Bond movie. $99 is not enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, James Bond's really gone downhill. <laughs> Ninety nine dollars is not enough. Is uh, what is like when at the end of the night the bartender's like, "Here's your tab," and he's like, "Here's ninety nine dollars," and the bartender's just like, "Ninety nine dollars is not enough." Right, right. Like you had you had like twelve martinis, dude. Yeah, I can't imagine myself buying this for anything other than firewood. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, $99 is not enough. Super Rich Steve offers $99,000. And then and then he finishes the guitar because clearly this guitar is not in the oh process of being built. It's in the process of being destroyed. Super Rich Steve sends this. He develops an entire division of like a university science department <laughs> to figure out how to make this guitar function (laughs) like like that is the you know millions of dollars spent there's faculty there are students involved trying to dissect even the possibility that this guitar could function in a normal way this is not past the 55 point inspection I don't think I made it past two. And the first two are that control cavity. Now, if I could buy that control cavity, that would be a whole other story. Yeah. You know, if you could just buy that as a part. It's a good looking, like it's just cut out and the saw, like, however it's soldered in there and everything looks really good. It looks like he has some sort of quick connect thing going on. Some sort of little circuit board as well. Like this person has, this person has a set of skills (laughs) but most of them don't have to do with guitar building. <laughs> right. Like they clearly are a, a skilled person who has ideas and is willing to execute ideas. Um, but they, they are not ready to apply those ideas to uh, a guitar that anyone would want. I mean, you know, I'm judging this really harshly. Maybe this was just an experiment and this person has a lot of other really, really cool functional builds that people love and that he loves and plays all the time. And this was just an experiment gone awry sort of thing. I, I want to, you know, I want to make sure that I'm giving him, her, them the benefit of a doubt that they are capable of doing things because there are hints here that they are. You know who I always give the benefit of the doubt to, Ryan? Who do you always give the benefit of a doubt to, Steve? Uh, this show's other sponsor, Chase Plus Audio. That's right, Steve. I'm holding the Therme right now. I lent this out to Jason Mays from the uh, Working Class Music Channel. And Mm -hmm. he spent some time with it. I don't think he ever got around to filming with it. I think he actually just wanted to have some fun with it. Cool. And I think he did. I could tell by the glimmer in his eye that he did indeed have fun with a Therme. And you could have fun with a Therme too if you purchase one. (laughs) 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 That's all it takes, kids. All you have to do is buy it. And then you get to use it and experiment it and experience it. What is the Therme, you ask? Well, It's it's a a guitar pedal. pedal. It's a guitar pedal. I don't need to tell you anymore. You're already interested. So go check it out. Click the links down below. Tell Chase Bliss that we sent you. And huge thanks to Chase Bliss for once again sponsoring this nonsense that they're not contractually obliged to support, but they keep doing it year in and year out. Uh, Chase Bliss is like that sponsor that's sponsored every single program on PBS for your entire life. And you still you know, wonder how they managed to do it. But Chase Bliss is making 60 Cycle Hum happen, and we thank them for it. Did I ramble enough, Steve? You did it. Let's hit this last ad. This was sent by John Fleming. This is Bo Diddley guitar with Bigsby and Hard Shell Case, $325. This guitar was based on Bo Diddley's original design. This do you is think a it's based? Tribute copy guitar. It sounds like it is not based. It sounds like this guitar is all cap. Uh, uh, it is not a Gretsch, but it looks and sounds a lot like one. Brand new, ready to go. Comes with hard shell case. So is this just I like would... an Alibaba version of a Bo Diddley? Probably. 
or maybe it's a home built sort of attempt sort of thing. Um, I mean, it's hard to tell the print on the pit guard makes me think that it could. Uh, there's well, the headstock's got a Gre- the Gretsch logo on it too. That's true. But people do that at home as well. This could be a wood shop wood class project, you know, like a, like a college based, like build your own guitar sort of project that this person did, or it could definitely be an Alibaba sort of situation, or it could be someone legitimately just knows how to build guitars at home. And this was a project. Uh, I'd have to look at a side by side with a really, with a real, uh, Bo Diddley guitar, but I feel like on the real ones that that knob up there doesn't hang over the pick guard like that. Looks weird to me. I also feel like the body is the wrong size and maybe the wrong dimensions. I mean, it could be all of those things. Oh, totally. Uh, but I just sent you a link to China factory product Gre H G six one three eight Bo Diddley guitar with Bigsby tails piece uh, for three hundred and eighty nine dollars. Their knob isn't hanging over the pick guard though. I'm gonna add. Maybe it's just because he changed the knobs. I, I think, think he changed the knob. The owner changed the knobs, and that's why it hangs over now. Because it was normally the little metal knurled knobs. Yeah. And this has all the is all speed knobs. Yeah, it has the the dark amber speed knobs. But I mean, yeah, it's the I same color and everything. It. Well, yeah. so the th- the thing I was gonna say is, if you're gonna take the time to water slide, same inlays too. Like you're gonna water do a water slide headstock at home, but you're still slapping on like a fifteen dollar like import big speed. Your priorities are really screwed up. Sure, I guess that's true. Oh. But of all the guitars to do a fake of, I feel like I get this one. Like it's not like it's not like you're getting you know, a fake Chet Atkins. You're not getting a fake, uh, you know, like Brian Setzer or something like that, where there is serious body construction things going on. It's a, it's, it's a square is a, is a rectangle, you know, like it's a, it is a plank of wood that happened to get some paint on it, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I I don't know. I think if, if you're, you're, I think if you're playing this guitar, you're probably not concerned about getting the exact vintage specs going on. I think you're kind of a free spirit this into getting into some sloppy, sloppy, slidey stuff, you know. But I mean, there's I'm not I'm not saying that the legality of this isn't problematic. Right. But like if there was a guitar to buy a budget version of, Mm -hmm. I get this one. This is being sold by China Guitar Store. Of course it is. Their whole lineup is, uh, they have like five. Oh, here you go. Here's one for you. China Factory Product Six Strings 360 Guitar Fire Glow Finish. You know what that means? Oh, uh, 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 it's a Rickenbacker sort of thing, huh? It's a Rick and Morty. (laughs) Oh, man. Should I buy a counterfeit Rickenbacker just to do dumb videos with it? No, because Rickenbacker will, will come after you. Someone actually asked recently in a group why fire. someone said like Firefly should do a Rickenbacker. I'm like, no. Oof. Like, Oof. like import Rickenbacker. So you think is, Rickenbacker is would, come a- space. would come after me for doing a video on it? I don't know, what, man. Like I've if just... I did a video and I was like, look at this trash, you shouldn't buy this. You think Rickenbacker would be like, well, we're gonna sue. I think if all the time, if it was just a picture and it said, "Look at this trash," uh, I think they would be like, "Well, people are gonna look at the picture and the and the title, and they're gonna think you're trashing us." There's a whole thing about how, like, even I think I could make it clear enough with the clickbait to make it. I'm I'm not trying to say that I would get the counterfeit and then try to be like bait people no, into I thinking know. that I got a real Rick. I would make it clear with the thumbnail. And the the clickbait that it is a fake Rick and Bacher. Mm, mm. I think you should. But what if the fake one is better than a real one? <laughs> it, <laughs> you know, in a weird way, if 
depending on how many of the quirks of the Rickenbacker are the right. things that you don't like about it, they probably manufacture the Rickenbackers, the, the fake ones are probably manufactured the same way all, you know, it's going to feel like it's probably made every to other like fake import. less Paul stats. Exactly. Which would make it a more conventionally playable guitar than a lot of actual Rickenbackers. This and that's is... not me praising Les Pauls at all. No. <laughs> and also that... there, like I've personally seen Rickenbackers in front of me that have some wild QC issues going on with the finish right. and stuff like that. Like I haven't run into anywhere. Where I was like, wow, these frets are wilds or bonkers bananas. Why did they put this out? But it's like, why does this $3,000 guitar have a really good, bad looking ugly knot in the side mm. of the wood like why does this you know like f hole look like it was painted in by my three-year-old you know like oh yeah yeah there's i've spotted a couple things like that but i but also like to be fair to the rickenbacker community like i do kind of get it they're a classic instrument they're an iconic instrument they're being made the old way, which a lot of people love. Like apparently they, you know, they're trying to make them as close to original specs and not trying to update them to have them be, you know, some sort of modern player playability sort of guitar. <laughs> There's another disc that I didn't mean to make, but you know, you know what I mean? Like I, I get it. I get it. Rickenbacker fans. Like I get why you like them, but I'm just asking you to look across the aisle and get why I haven't bonded with every Rickenbacker I've ever seen. So, do we want How to did talk this about, turn into a Rickenbacker? I don't because we we're. I was looking at fake fake stuff. Oh, on that's Express. right. That's right. Uh, we didn't talk about Gear Fest at all. Do we want to? We did a whole episode from Gear Fest. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't talk <laughs> about Gear Fest. We just we talked kind of did Fest. though. I don't remember, man. I was so tired. Yeah, you, don't worry. Gear Fest is covered. <laughs> There's gonna be videos. Most people are gonna be sick of hearing about Gear Fest by the time all the other channels edit and publish their stuff. So I found my test results. Oh, did you? Uh, oh, for I, for the McKnight thing. Yeah, I found. Oh, them. I have. I took photos you took a over, photo. your, over your guys' shoulders of the test results. I'm gonna frame mine. I'm gonna put it right on the wall behind. <laughs> I think you should, honestly. I no, think you should I'm have a. I should that. think you should have a little photo, or you should have a photo of Phil's right next to yours. I still don't want to reveal who won. Yeah, yeah. The numbers are like pretty wild, though, and I hopefully Phil has published it by the time this airs. Mm -hmm. uh, if he has, we should do a whole standalone episode, like it's just another like us hanging out, chatting with people about the oh, results. Yeah. Of the test like okay it's been published guys let's discuss this let's discuss what this means let's discuss what the future is going to look like you know going forward what do we understand about the music instrument industry because phil mcknight and steve took an employment test at sweetwater <laughs> this I'm is just, important stuff i'm just still really glad he let me jump in on that because dude he didn't have to tell us that he was doing it and then when i was like oh man that sounds like fun he could have been like oh yeah I, i'll i can see if hr like i can introduce you to the hr person and you can do it on your own time or whatever uh -huh. like because i just wanted to do it to do it i i wasn't even thinking about it as like you no know, the moment i heard, content. heard you guys talking about it, it was like well phil can steve do it with you because this would be amazing content yeah and he immediately uh, was like oh yeah totally. oh yeah he was super into it so I, i'm really <laughs> uh yeah. grateful for that so anyway there's, there's something that i really got it uh that warmed my heart at gear fest i said i didn't want to talk about it but now i'm going to talk about it is getting to see like the new channels that were there new meaning that they hadn't been to uh right. previous youtuber events that are on that scale sort of thing um them getting to meet phil mcknight and spend time with phil mcknight and yeah. people realizing like this, this is a phil's a good guy Mm -hmm. like phil is like a legit like good guy he's humble he's helpful he'll talk to you about whatever you want to know and won't won't stop talking like i i yeah i legitimately cherish phil mcknight and you wouldn't think that like our channels would really be compatible our audiences can be very different at times and things like that oh no and kidding the, the reason to watch <laughs> phil mcknight is very different than the reason to watch you know, one of our videos. Yeah. But uh, he's one of those guys that, uh, yeah, I really value him. And I, I'm glad when he shows up to those things. And I'm glad that other people have got to experience him and know that, you know, he's a person of value now. Not just, yeah. not be, not a person of value because of his channel, 
mm-hmm. because of who he is. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's extremely gracious to everyone. It's he's a really uh, incredible. Right. No, totally. And I think people are going to see that in the video as well. Like just like Phil putting himself out there and, and being willing to be part of our nonsense. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's left. Do you want to talk about the song? Did we have one more? No, that was the last ad. Wasn't it? Uh, that was the last ad. Um, and so, yeah, I'll talk about the song. The song was sent to us by cat house. Uh, Cat House. Yeah, Cat House says... Uh, She's kitty kitty. Uh, hey, she knows hey how there. to meow. Just started to cut my teeth on writing tunes a couple months ago and released my first EP a few weeks ago. Uh, would love for you all to take a listen to a single called I Want to Bite Ya from it for this the show. This is a cat song. Uh, and it's a thrash, described, self-described as thrash polka. I wish we could listen to it together. I wish we could hold hands and listen to it, Steve. We're getting a little taste. I like it already. Is this us listening right, to it? Or? I'll let you. I'll let you play the whole thing. That sounds yeah, like a we'll lot of fun, though. So it I does. hope everyone enjoys it. Well, Steve, we could listen to this together if you catch the premiere. I think I'm going to launch it on Tuesday this week, so okay. that it's not lining up. It's not overlapping Fourth of July. Let's right. watch the premiere together and digitally hold hands. I don't know if I can watch the premiere this week. I probably Aww. should try to make it back to the office at some point. Right, right. Okay. Well, enjoy the song, guys. And uh, you know what? Stay grounded. See ya.